But after the setback for Indiana with the transfers, we got to talk about Indiana Northwestern because this is the next game on Indiana's schedule. One game at a time. Like Signetti says, 1-0. and oh. Has nothing to do with the fact Indiana's 5-0. and oh. uh, Indiana's 40% chance to make the playoff. Like I said, we're going to get to all that stuff if Indiana keeps winning. None of that matters right now. Right now, Indiana is trying to achieve bowl eligibility. They're also trying to achieve being 6-0 and oh for the first time since 1967, which same as 5-0 oh since 1967. But Indiana also went 6-0 and oh that year. They haven't been 6-0 and oh since. Which also another funny stat about that is Indiana was five and zero in nineteen ten, then nineteen sixty seven, and then twenty twenty four. Fifty seven years in distance every single time that's happened. Kind of a funny coincidence there. But Indiana Northwestern is that's going to help Indiana possibly be able to move to six and zero and already achieve bowl eligibility, which is absolutely unreal. I mean, I still cannot believe that we're talking about Indiana possibly being. Un, you know, undefeated at six and zero, and also we're talking about Indiana being bowl eligible already before a lot of other major teams, which is absolutely crazy. And what's also crazy too about this game is that Indiana is favored by fourteen. Indiana is favored by fourteen points in this game on the road. I know that Ron Field is demolished. I know that Northwestern is basically playing on like a lacrosse field. Like there's no fans. I mean, it's abysmal for Northwestern. They're going to have a new and improved stadium, so it's not all that bad for Northwestern in the long run. I mean, they're going to have a new stadium, but for now, Northwestern they they have you know a, a lacrosse field as their uh, their football stadium. It, it's it's not a pretty sight to see. And hopefully Indiana fans, because there's a lot of alumni in Chicago. Northwestern's in Evanston, which is a suburb of Chicago. Hopefully some Indiana alumni will uh, show up to this game, unless Northwestern bought all the tickets. But Northwestern's 2-2. Two and two. Not like they're doing all that well. And Indiana being favored by 14 is just absolutely crazy. But we got to look at some key players, though, because this is really going to determine – the game. I did this last week against Maryland, and we're going to do it again. We're going to look at Northwestern first. Northwestern, they've had two quarterbacks playing this season, and neither of them have done all that well. One of them, you guys will recognize, Mike Wright. He was the former Vanderbilt quarterback. He should have stayed at Vanderbilt. He actually did pretty good there, but he transferred to Mississippi State. He didn't play. So then he goes to Northwestern. Since uh, Ben Bryant was out of eligibility, he helped lead Northwestern to a bowl game last year. Very good season for Northwestern. But unfortunately, they're not in the West anymore. A lot tougher of a schedule for the Wildcats. But Mike Wright, he won bad at Vanderbilt, but he's had a lot of problems at Northwestern, which to be fair, Northwestern's talent's poor, which Vanderbilt's was too. But Northwestern doesn't have a lot of great talent. So Mike Wright's kind of been benched. Now they're going with Jack. I think his last name's like Loesch or Lausch, kind of an interesting last name. But their back, their backup quarterback is now technically their starting quarterback. But, I mean, his stats are kind of worse. I mean, he does have two touchdown passes, which Mike Wright had zero, but his completion percentage is 48%. So, basically, from what I can gather here is that Northwestern's offense is bad. It's not good. And that's kind of why when you look at the over-under for this game, it's at 41-and-a-half. When Indiana played Maryland, the over-under was at, like, 51 so this game, the over-under is 10 less. So I'm not, again, a betting expert. I'm not going to pretend to say I'm a betting expert, but there's a decent chance this game might go over, especially with how good Indiana's been on offense. Like, Indiana's been scoring, like, outside of the Florida International game, but that was the first game of the season. Still some rust. They only had 31 points in that game. Every other game they've had, they've scored over 40. Indiana's offense is humming. So basically, Indiana has met that over-under themselves in every single game. But... Northwestern, there has to be a reason why the over-under is so low. If, if their offense is so bad, we know that they can't really score all that much. Their one good back is Cam Porter. Cam Porter's good. He has three touchdowns on the season, five yards of carry. That's impressive that he's got five yards of carry considering their offense is bad. So even though they have played a couple you know, not-so-great opponents, it's still good. I mean, they did lose to Duke, should have beat Duke. Northwestern should have beat Duke. I can't believe they lost that game. They had that game. They gave it away. My my man, Mike Wright did not play all that good in that game. And Malik Murphy for Duke was horrible. He kept turning it over, but Duke found a way to win. And they're still undefeated. But you also had them losing to Washington. 24-5. to Northwestern put up five points against Washington. It's not like Washington has a juggernaut defense. So definitely very poor for Northwestern on offense. I'm sure the receivers are not all that great considering their quarterbacks aren't. I mean, A.J. Henning's their guy. 
He's got one touchdown, 229 yards. But look at that. Everybody else is low in yards. Just it, It's probably more so that their QB plays bad versus like the receivers are just all bad. I mean, I'm sure A.J. Henning's a pretty solid receiver. I mean, putting up as many yards as he has with, you know, basically a terrible offense. But their offense isn't good. At least their field goal kicker. He's hit all of the extra points. Six of nine. Eh. But most of his misses are from long. But the defense, that's where Northwestern has their bread and butter. Their defense is pretty good. I'm not going to deny that their defense is, is pretty good. It is. Absolutely solid. Uh, I mean, is it one of the best in the Big Ten? I mean, you're going up against, you know, Michigan. that has studs on defense. They're going to be in the NFL. You, you talk about Ohio State. It's got a lot of great defenders, even though, you know, some years the defense isn't the best, but they still have talent. Penn State, pretty solid defense. So, yeah, it's not like Northwestern's defense is going to rank up with those teams. But for a team that – you know, doesn't have a lot of NFL quality players. Their defense is still pretty solid. It's just with Northwestern, if their offense is so bad that they can't really score that much, it doesn't really matter how good their defense is. That's why they lost to Washington 24 to 5. And Washington just lost to Rutgers. Now, Rutgers is a lot better. I'm not saying losing to Rutgers is shameful like it would have been under the Chris Ash era, but I'm just saying that Washington lost to Rutgers. Northwestern only put up five against Washington. So, Northwestern offensively is horrible. They are a bad offensive team, and their defense gets tired, and that's unfortunate. And they don't have a home crowd either. They just don't because it's small. Like, it's a lacrosse field. It only has, like, 11,000 people. So, or whatever, maybe 12,000 at the max. And there might be some Indiana fans there. So, the crowd, I mean, it's going to be interesting just to see how both teams play. Like, I want to see how it looks because, honestly, I've not watched Northwestern really play outside of highlights this year. I haven't watched them, but it it just looks weird seeing them playing on this lacrosse field. It just looks wrong. It just does not look right in any way, shape, or form. So, definitely Northwestern. You see some standout defenders, Xander Mueller, Devin Turner, Darren Johnson, they got some good players. I mean, these guys, maybe a couple of them might be playing on Sundays. They're pretty solid. But then you go over to Indiana. Keep in mind that when you saw Northwestern, right, you saw Northwestern, their two quarterbacks combined for 634 yards. Grant, they have only played in four games. But then you go over to Indiana. Look at these offensive numbers. And, yeah, Indiana hasn't played the best teams in the world. I understand that. But still. Look at these stats. Curtis Rourke, 1,372 passing yards already. 11 touchdowns, two picks. Both those picks were against Maryland. But he's still putting up great stats. He's in the Heisman running. Like He's way down the list, but he's in the Heisman running. So he's having a great year for Indiana. Curtis Rourke, just Indiana needs to protect him. Not let Northwestern's defense get him on the ground. Do not let him get rattled. Rourke got a little rattled against Maryland a couple times, but he settled in the game, still threw for almost 400 yards, three touchdowns, two picks. He got it together, still had a good game. Then Indiana's rushing attack. Look at this. Justice Ellison and Tyson Lawton, both of Indiana's top two backs, have more yards than Northwestern's top back. That's good. Really, really good. And they are rushing for a whole lot of touchdowns. Five touchdowns, six touchdowns, four touchdowns. Indiana's been great on the ground. Elijah Green, Kalen Black. Kalen Black did have the fumble last week against Maryland. But other than that fumble, Indiana's running backs have been flawless, playing great football. All four of them, and all four of them are good in different ways. Some are better at pass blocking. Some are better at, you know, being like a speedster, can get down the field. Walton's kind of a big power back, but then like Kalen Black, Elijah Green, they're quicker. So Indiana's got a plethora of solid running backs. It's going to be interesting with Northwestern's defense. I'm not overlooking Northwestern defense. They're not a slouch. But Indiana's offense is really good. They're going to have to do a really good job against Indiana. Northwestern probably playing the toughest offense they've played so far. And then you look at Elijah Surratt, almost 400 receiving yards. He's been great. Omar Cooper, 328. Miles Price, 246. Miles Cross, 184. And Zach Horton, he's only got 85 receiving yards to tight end, but he's a fantastic blocker. He might be playing on Sundays. And then all the way down here, Donovan McCauley, only 21 receiving yards, and he just entered the portal. So, again, not that big a deal. As long as these receivers stay healthy, they've been great. Radichich, the kicker for Indiana hasn't missed anything. No extra points, no field goals. Hasn't even had to kick many field goals because they've been so great on offense. And then look at these stats. As good as Northwestern's defense has been, Indiana's has been good too. Aiden Fisher already has 50 total tackles. He's on pace to get like 130 or 140 tackles this year. Like if Indiana ends up making a bowl game, plays in 13 games, because like right now they played five. So 10 would get him to 100 tackles if he keeps up this level. Obviously, tougher opponents might not have as many tackles, but Aiden Fisher, great transfer from James Madison. Then Jalen Walker, 31 tackles. Sean Asbury, 28 tackles. D'Angelo Pons, he's going to be in the NFL. He's good. 
really good cover corner, 23 total tackles. Indiana, a really solid defense. And I feel like with how well Indiana's offense has been playing, the defense is kind of getting overlooked. It is. Like, you're talking about the fact that, yeah, they gave up 28 to Maryland, but as I said earlier, there was a couple breaks Maryland got that even allowed them to score 28. They really probably only should add 14. So Indiana's defense has been good, like really good. That's why Hummus Hero, you pointed out earlier, that Indiana's top five in offense and defense. So as good as their offense has been, and that's getting all the attention, their defense is really good too. That's what Indiana hasn't had until this year with Signetti. Under Kevin Wilson, they were a great offensive team, terrible defensive team. I mean, they were really bad on defense. They were losing games 54-50. I mean, just trash defense. But their offense was great. All those great players they had. Then under Tom Allen, most years, their defense was better. And then they had Penix that made it kind of both for brief, really brief. And then after that, their offense just was horrible. Defense was all right. Now they got a legit offense and a legit defense. And that's how you are a legit team. You have to be good on both sides of the ball, not what Iowa does, where, oh, their their defense is elite, offense is terrible. Or USC, UNC, LSU lately, where their defense is bad, offense is great. You got to be good on both sides of the ball. And I believe Indiana's great on both sides of the ball. So who do I think is going to win? What is my final score prediction for Indiana Northwestern? I believe that Northwestern, with their defense, is going to make Indiana score less. I do. I think Indiana, they're not going to get into the 40s. If they do, I would be shocked if they do. I mean, that would mean that they're, like, really rolling. Like, they've learned from the mistakes last week, and they're just – Lightning in a bottle. They're just continuing this historic season so far, and they're playing great. But I don't think they're going to get into the 40s. I don't. I think that Northwestern defense is good enough. It's going to give Indiana some tests. It's on the road, too. Small environment, but it's on the road. Still going to be interesting there. So I think Indiana is going to struggle to score at first. I think they're going to get it figured out by the second half. The key in this game is can Northwestern score? That's the key of this game. Can Northwestern score? Because if they do what they did against Washington, if they only put up five points, yeah, they're not beating Indiana. Indiana is not going to score less than that. So, yeah, Northwestern's going to have to at least get in the 20s, in my opinion, to win on offense. they got to get into the 20s. Maybe if they can get a turnover. That's why their defense is so important, too. If their defense can force Indiana to make a mistake, pick six. Maybe if they can get work to do a pick six. Maybe if they can get a fumble recovery or two in this game, like Maryland did. Maybe Northwestern can capitalize on it, get good field position, kick some field goals. Or, you know, get some some easy points that way. You know, like close field, maybe they can score a touchdown. Because Northwestern, they got decent players. They're not completely horrible. They just don't have enough good players. That's the problem. Just not enough good players. But I think Northwestern's offense, if Indiana's defense is not sharp, like they've been lately, and they allow Northwestern to score some points, it could be interesting. But at the end of the day, I just think Northwestern's offense is too bad. And I think that even though their defense is good, I think Indiana's too good offensively. They're too disciplined. Signetti's not going to allow them to get to the, with the rat poison. You're not going to let the fact that their rank get to them. Like, oh, we're ranked now. We're going to overlook Northwestern. Not going to do that. Indiana's favored by 14. You know, like Indiana's favored big. Maybe they'll overlook Northwestern. I don't think Indiana's at that point. They're not a juggernaut of a program yet, you know, where they've been winning for three or four years under Signetti where they could overlook a team like this. I just don't see it. They're still really high right now. They're on an emotional high. They're, they're going to continue to be hungry, and Signetti's that type of coach. He's going to get them playing hard, playing well. I think Indiana's going to win this game 28-14. to 14. I think that – the spread's right. I think 14 works. I think Indiana's going to win by 14. And I think this game's barely going to go over. Again, I'm not a betting expert, so you don't want to take my betting advice or anything. If you want the betting advice, you saw the ad earlier in the stream. Mark Rogers, Steve Merrill, they're the experts with the betting betting odds and stuff like that. I'm not a betting expert, but I do believe that Indiana and Northwestern will barely go over because of Indiana's offense. I think Indiana's offense will do just enough to get over that mark. And I do believe that they're going to basically be right on that line. Whether that line goes under or over 14 is going to determine whether they cover or not. But I do think basically Indiana has covered every game except Florida International, and that was the first game of the year. So I think they're basically going to cover in this game as well. I just – I believe in Indiana. I believe in the way that they're playing. I mean, I'm so thrilled and, and excited with the way that Indiana's been playing. I mean, it, it, like – I know that for some people, they don't believe in them yet. And no, I don't think Indiana's a top 10 team just because they're top five statistically in offense and defense. I just don't think that. I really, really don't. I think that they're a top 20 team. Maybe top 15 is a stretch. They don't have the talent to be that, 
They don't. They don't have that good of a team talent wise. But it's the coach. It's Signetti. It's the, just this perfect blend of players. It's gonna be interesting because Rourke's gone after this year. A lot of these players are gonna be gone. Can Signetti do it again? I think as long as he stays in Indiana, they're always gonna be a solid team. But I, I just don't see them overlooking a team like this. In previous seasons, I would. I'd be really nervous for Indiana, but I'm not. That Maryland game really showed. Really, really showed that Indiana is just not gonna overlook teams like that. I just, I just don't see. It. I really, really don't. 